and get this started. All right. So, while we wait for that, I guess I have about 39 seconds to sit here and fill. We got the audience back from lunch. Welcome back, audience. The other group went long, so our toast is cast on the main stage all night long. Oh, yeah, fist pumps. Great audience. I might be making that up. You don't know. Um, so, we just got to wait for this uh, this GOM TV player to uh, time out. I wonder if that's me. I don't even really know, but that's okay. Uh if Hero goes down to 4GG, that suddenly makes the group a little bit more interesting, I think, because a lot of people are feeling like, okay, Hero's going to go up, and he's probably going to go out first, which, I mean, that makes sense. He's so strong. Uh, definitely could be the case, but, of course, you can't count out SOS or Symbol, whereas 4GG was the the more easy person to maybe count out. You know, he's been outside of the Korean scene a lot longer. Yeah, Hero also played a different WCS that wasn't Korea, but he lives in Korea and practices here, plays Pro League and all that. So, uh, it will be really interesting if 4GG goes up to the to the winner bracket match. Not saying that he'll necessarily get out, because I f really feel like Symbol, who, you know, Symbol is so good right now. He got top four in WCS uh, Korea, and then, of course, SOS, top four. I think that those guys are probably going to outmatch, uh, you know, Millennium 4GG. Sorry to any 4GG fans, but uh, looks like this should be done in just a couple seconds here. Still timing some people out. Just chilling here. I hope you guys are enjoying the solo cast. It's really difficult to do. And there we go. I think everyone has dropped that's going to drop, so we should be able to get back in that game. Okay. Up here in the top right, our Protoss player down one game. He is Liquid Hero from America. Of course, from America WCS, where he won. And down here in the bottom right, our Korean Terran, he is Millennium 4GG from Europe. And of course, yes, he did qualify in Europe. Very high-end player indeed. I'm excited to see what build order he chooses on this map because I think that's going to dictate a lot because 4GG will do very abusive things. Now Hero will sometimes too. But I'm I'm more interested in the actual decision-making process behind uh, 4GG because I feel like Hero isn't very easy to predict in PvT. Whereas uh, 4GG might follow the same lines a little bit more. So, with Hero, looks like he's going to be going Nexus first, and with 4GG, looks like he's going to be going Command Center first. And that means that we're going to get likely into a macro scenario, but there are builds with both of these openings that go into heavy, heavy aggression. For instance, we could see from Hero uh, right into a 6 gate from there. Of course, we could see both these players just expand yet again. And this is still basically a Nexus first, uh, for anyone wondering. You can get the gateway right before, and it just shoots your tech up a little bit faster. Uh, either way is completely fine. This one is just a slightly more conservative. Like, if they were going for some sort of early rush, this one will do a little bit better. And if they're going for what 4GG is doing, which is the command center first, then the command, the, the actual Nexus before the gateway will be a little bit better. But they're, they're the same type of brand build, basically. Now, we do have the double barracks follow-up here for 4GG. Hero not even going to check. It's always nice to harass that SCV at the natural. If you just shift right-click on that guy a bunch of times, it gets really annoying. The probe falls in very quickly and deals a lot of damage. And then they have to send down two SCVs, one to build, one to attack. So you basically cost them a lot of mining time by doing that before going to their base to scowl. Because you know they don't have any barracks up yet anyways. So this is actually some really good information he has. It's two raxes instead of like a rax and a gas or something like that. Which this is the older school kind of safer style that we're seeing from 4GG. But it's a little bit harder to predict what exactly he's going to do because he can just add more Raxes and go for some early pressure. He can just add more Raxes, 
make some Marines and make another command center. There's a lot of choices uh, for 4GG and exactly what he wants to do. So here right now, just going to chrono boost out that Stalker as he should. That's going to help him to kill any scouting SCVs and micro against any Marines that may come. A couple gas on the way for 4GG. Very, very standard from him. Kind of older builds that we're seeing from 4GG so far. On Hero's side, you can't really tell what he's up to yet, because he can actually follow it up with anything, and in fact, he does. A Stargate is going to be on the way. I'm so interested to see what he wants to do with this. Does he get an Oracle? And if he gets an Oracle, does he get two Oracles? And that may sound kind of funny, but uh, you can have a lot of power with uh, mid-game, like two Oracle. You just walk in from both sides at the natural and the main, and you will kill a lot of SCVs almost no matter what. So I like the opening. Uh, of course, Void Ray is going to be the least likely. Wouldn't be surprised if we do see some Phoenixes popping up as well. Uh, Phoenixes can be pretty useful against Terran, and in fact, there are, there have been the return of some Colossus Phoenix builds. It's a very old school strategy from uh, about three years ago that went out of style and then kind of came back a little bit. But we'll see if that's what he ends up wanting to do. So we are going to have one Oracle immediately going over, and that's going to be a lot of pressure and a lot of scouting that Hero can do. I definitely do like the choice because he saw the double barracks. He knows that tech isn't coming too quick. There's not going to be something like a widow mine waiting for him when he gets there. Uh, there's not going to be counter medevacs out right away. And those are the things that would make such a late Stargate risky. So he's seen that those aren't there. And he's going to go ahead and grab that Oracle. And it's not really risky at all. So the first Oracle is going. Ah, okay. I really like this now, especially since 4GG doesn't have a bunker. He's trying to play a little bit extra greedy by not making any. So when we see Oracles flying and start killing things, such as Marines and SCVs, now watch this. There are two Marines there, but you need like five to actually stop the Oracle. And let's see how many kills he can actually get. See that Marine goes down in just a matter of seconds. This is a lot of kills already for this Oracle. Six kills, one of which is a Marine. This is great. Seven kills, eight kills, two of which are Marines. This has been a fantastic Oracle so far, and getting out makes it just twice as sweet. He could have lost that, it still would have been fine. Now, behind this, a Robo going up. Now with that proxy pylon, it looked like something that he could have put a lot more pressure on uh, or GG with. But this Oracle looks like it's not going to end up getting anything done, really. That Oracle's going to die. <laughs> He's just waiting. Alright, well, he waited for enough energy to actually tag some stuff and see what's going on. A uh, bunch of oracles are right outside of this base. So, I mean, not oracles, uh, stalkers. So, what is going to happen here is this is going to be another Colossus base play. When you see that many stalkers, generally speaking, you're going to see Colossus too because you already have all that anti-air to fight off Vikings. So, with those there, uh, until there's like Medivac, Stim, maybe some Marauders in there and stuff, they are going to be able to hold back the Terran army for a bit. So, holding back the Terran army so it can't just walk out, and then harassing and scouting with the Oracle. Uh, pretty useful. Uh, I mean, like, Hero is getting all the information. He has some map control. He knows what's going on. This part makes me a little bit nervous, though, that probe right there. If he goes ahead and takes that, that Nexus, it's going to be a little bit harder to hold because he's done a lot of tech all at once. And he's done some damage, but he lost both Oracles with a grand total of something like nine kills, which it started out so beautifully and then didn't really continue as beautifully as it did. So a Widow Mine dropping. Oh, God, this is really bad. Ooh, that was, I think that was five kills right there and another one dropping in the main base. Oh, my God. Hero is just not looking. Oh, my I don't know what he was really doing right there, but this is really, really bad. Losing all those probes already, and now he's forced the Nexus Cannon, and poor GG right now, walking up the map, he's going to be able to maybe catch all these Stalkers. Oh, God. And Hero may be taken out rather quickly here. It seems this is not the hero that I'm so used to watching. He's he's definitely being a bit more slop than you would expect. Taking more damage from all these little attacks and drops. Okay, so... 4GG has killed 11 probes so far. 
So that, that Widowmine drop has been great, and in fact, they're still trying to recharge right now. It doesn't look like they will, but he's still gaining value with things like this medevac, keeping a lot of those units up at the main base, killing off a, an extra stalker with them, and he's making his third base as well. So this third, as I was saying, this is going to be very hard to hold. The hero's doing a little bit too much all at once. And hmm, will he be able to take out its a good amount of force fields, but not as much meat as you would really like there with their bosses. So now he's lost that nexus. And to just back up and go over that for a second, right? He went for the very fast expansion response to his opponents, saw the multiple racks, so decided he could go Oracle. Yeah, that's a good call. And then off of two oracles that kind of died and didn't do quite as much as what he would like or didn't stay alive, which just the threat of oracles is really nice, so that would be fine. Uh, but he kind of lost them rather quickly, made a bunch of stalkers, went Colossus Tech and two forges and expanded. And you can see how many times I say and there because each time is like a significant happening in a StarCraft game. So Hero overextended himself on what he was able to do all at once. He can't do every single one of those things. He could have cut one thing out and been completely fine, but doing all of that together was a bit of a risk, and 4GG has punished him accordingly, and now is up a good 17 supply, and he's looking pretty good. All right, so the third base being secured, kind of an interesting location right there. Uh, definitely a place that you can kind of rally your army through a little bit harder for Protoss Harass that way, but frontal Protoss attacks are going to get there quicker, so you got to remember that. Good catch right there by Hero. Looks like he will end up losing one more. No, not quite losing that Stalker. And Hero, of course, going for some counter harassment too. One of the, the Protosses that definitely does harass the most. There are Vikings, though, so this War Prism should be taken out very quickly. But this is a nice move. Taking out War uh, Reactors is very, very useful. And, of course, if he gets an Engineering Bay, that's always a big deal as well. It looks like 4GG will end up saving that. But there's a lot of information that was gained there. Uh, he killed the Reactor. He lost a lot of mineral worth of units. But he does know that there's a good amount of Hellbats in this army, and he's going to have to be very, very careful because of that. Archon's definitely going to be a good unit to use against that. Psy Storm's going to be somewhat useful. Colossi always going to be nice. Uh, but there are seven Vikings out too, so this is going to be based mostly off of how good the Psy Storms are of Hero. And they're going to have to be quite good because he's down about 25 supply. And in fact, he's got 10 more probes than 4GG, which means he's really down 35 supply when you think about the fact that this is probably going to be decided by army very soon. So we'll see how good those storms are. He doesn't have a lot of meat to soak up everything else. He does, oh, that mothership core has to be very, very careful. Okay, throws down a couple nice time warps, and that's a pretty decent storm to start out. Does lose that mothership core, unfortunately. And he's got to hit nice size storms here. This is the important part. That Colossus looks like it's going to be sniped. The Vikings landing and taking a storm. Kind of the opposite of normal, but he's doing a pretty good job with this. And there's just not a lot of actual units left for Hero. Another beautiful storm. But 4GG still with some units left over. It looks like he'll pick off maybe the Archon and try to get out. Or just pick off the Archon let everything die. That's fine too. Uh, but... He's killed off all the expensive units, which is nice. Now, he lost his Vikings, and that's a little bit rough. And as we can see in the units lost tab, it is now in the favor of Hero, but the economy this game so far has been better for 4GG. So actually, from what's left over, I would say 4GG has a little bit better army right now. Now... 4GG just has to make sure that he's careful about his starport units, because I only see one starport right now. And that can be a bit rough, because he lost his medevacs and he lost his vikings. If I'm here right now, well, here is doing it anyways, but any Protoss that kills off all your vikings should be chronoing out Colossi immediately, because you've killed the vikings, and especially when you've killed those medevacs as well, you have to get those Colossi out, because they aren't just gonna, they just won't have anti-air against it, and you're going to have army dominance at that point. So 4GG is continuing to push out right now. I think he's completely aware of all these things that I've been saying. 
uh, and realizes that as long as he puts the pressure on now, he's still going to be okay because he did get rid of the expensive units. So it takes a while for Hero to get back up there uh, with those units that he's going to need to actually fight off a big Terran ball. You know, Claw Sire are very good against Terran, but just one, not so much. You really need a few at this point. Kind of an interesting uh, Templar he warped in there. We'll lose those couple Marauders, but we'll clean this up rather easily. And, I mean, I'm going to check in. Yeah, he only has one Starport. I really want to see another. He added another factory to make more Hellbats. But he's pumping out Vikings right now with just four men of X. I really, really would like to see that second, that second starport. In fact, anytime you have a secured third base economy for uh, Terran vs. Protoss, second starport is never a bad call. Well, 3-3 three, three on the way there. Both players are actually doing very, very well on upgrades. Now, 4GG's army looking Pretty scary for Zealots right now. He's up to 15 Hellbats, and there's only 19 Zealots out. But there are two Colossus and six High Templars, so that's going to be the main part here. He's going to need to really storm heavily. Uh, this, is, this is looking pretty rough, especially losing that right there, that one High Templar getting picked off. A lot of Zealots in the back as well. He's down about 40 supply right now. And there's a good amount of Vikings. The thing is, there's not a lot of medevacs, so Storms can still help him quite a bit, but this is looking more and more 4 favor. favor. Once again, that does get picked off. The Zealots, of course, cannot just run into that. He does finally size Storm, but I think it's too little too late. He's lost all of his Claws. He's basically got nothing left. I, even if these are the best size storms ever, 4GG is probably going to end up winning this game. He's killed that third base once again. The economy of Liquid Hero is in the gutter. The army of Liquid Hero is in the gutter. He's got a mostly Zealot based force against a mostly Hellbat based force. 22 Hellbats out right now. That is that is pretty sick. All right, well, this this could be brutal. Really, really nice size storms, but. It seems like 4GG not even bothering to micro that much. You know, he's got such a better unit composition at this point that he's just going to rip through absolutely everything. And Hero's going to have to GG. He's got half the supply. He's got half the economy at best. He's got nothing left. So that is going to be that. Just waiting on his GG. You know, i got to say, I am... Uh, pretty impressed by 4GG this game. Uh, this series, in fact. 4GG has done a really nice job uh, just kind of dismantling Hero 2-0. to zero. Now, that game, Hero was way, way too greedy uh, after the Oracles. Again, he did one thing too many. Uh, double Forge. He went Oracles, Double Forge, Colossus, Stalkers, and uh, another base. Like, he just, he had no actual muscle in his army whatsoever. That's all like a, a lot of tech units and upgrades and expansions. And with absolutely no muscle mixed in there whatsoever, no real macro going on, that was, that was pretty easy for him to get up there, kill that third base and kill those tech units. And then 4GG just kind of ran him over. So... I guess 4GG is up in that winner's match, and Hero's going to wait the loser of uh, SOS and Symbol, which will be coming up next. By the way, big cheers to this audience. It's getting bigger and bigger. You guys are great. Make me feel not lonely at all. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, I think, and jump to a quick commercial break, and then we will be back with the next match, which is SOS against Symbol, one of my favorite matches of the whole group stage. So don't go away. <laughs> 